Hello. In this video, we are going to tackle the face centered cubic 111 surface. Recall that each of the crystals in the cubic system has an atom at the vertex of the cube. In the face centered cubic, there is additional atom at the center of each face. Now we want to represent the 111 plane. So if we look along the near face of our cube, we see three points. Here's a vertex, a face point, and a, another vertex point. And we can map them to a surface along here. So the circled points are represented along here. We note that the edge length A for a cube remains A. This length here is also A. And since we're going from this point to that point, we have a diagonal. This is the diagonal of a square with edge length A. So we know that the entire length from here to here is the square root of two times A. Since the entire length from here to here is the square root of two times A, the distance between each pair of points is going to be the square root of two times A divided by two. In many textbooks, you will see this particular distance, the square root of two over two times A, represented as A divided by the square root of two, which is simply another version of exactly the same fraction. So again, in terms of the unit A, the distance between points along this line is going to be the square root of two over two times A. To see the next set of points that are part of our one, one, one surface, we continue the one, one, one plane here. And you can do that by including this particular point and this point, and these would map to this surface over here. So this is this particular point, and this vertex point here is the point right there. So we had the particular line here in orange, over there, the line in green going from orange to green to green is represented along there. To show the remaining points, again, we can continue our surface, cut along the line of the diagonal of the front face, then along the diagonal of the bottom face, and now we're going to come along the diagonal of the left face of the cube, and the point that would be included would be here, and then here again. So the particular face point in purple is there, and then the vertex point we had already done in orange, but we can do again in purple, just to show that we've gone back to that particular point. So we can show the mapping of the points uh, along the plane as we slice through the face centered cubic cube, and then we see where these particular points fall along the 111 surface. The distances between points uh, from going from left to right is also, because we're working with a cube here, between these two points is also going to be the square root of two over two times a. So that leaves us with the threefold symmetry of the FCC 111 surface. It is most common to define the unit cell of a surface like this as a primitive rhombohedral cell. For example, these particular points would be connected to form a rhombus. This is equivalent to a pair of equilateral triangles um, joined along a uh, single face. And then we're going to represent this particular unit cell in Lego using a similar scheme to what we had done before. And recall that we had used dimensions such that we had a rectangle with a base of four. So this distance would also be four. The height of our particular right triangle here would be seven units seven studs. So that would give the distance between 
points along the uh, edge of the equilateral triangle there, or along the edge of the rhombohedral unit cell, would be the square root of 65. And this ends up being very, very close to 8. And along here, the separation between atoms is a distance of 8. If we had perfect representation of the uh, symmetry of the 1, 1, 1 surface, this distance and this distance would be absolutely identical. It's fortunate that, um, as a coincidence, this is very, very close, so it's a nice approximation. Even more, in reality, real face-centered cubic cells vary slightly from the ideal proportions, so this is quite a uh, realistic uh, representation of actual FCC 111 surfaces, and we can do it conveniently in LEGO. With the addition of the figure, it's easy to see the six-fold hexagonal symmetry, so we can definitely see a hexagonal structure at the, at the very surface. You can also see the three-fold symmetry of the equilateral triangles. And one thing we have to be careful of is that in a representation of the exposed surface, that these particular darkened dots here are not to be cut out. So we don't have a representation of an atom that goes underneath these because this is a lower level. So um, these atoms are not at the same level as the exposed atoms of the surface. We can use multiple copies of the figures to easily demonstrate the phenomenon of translation. For example, if we set up our figure, it lines up with all the atoms. And if we slide over, we translate one unit to the right. Again, the atoms will all line up and we continue, we would be able to generate an infinite surface. We notice that the distance between atoms is the square root of two over two times a, which to repeat is equivalent to a divided by the square root of two. Now we see with this particular figure, we see the um, rhombohedral uh, unit cell emphasized. So again, we're still connecting exactly the same points, but we have choices in how we define the unit cell. And it's typical in the case of the three and six fold symmetry uh, structures to stick with a rhombohedral uh, quadrilateral unit cell, which works out to be uh, the most convenient representation in many cases, but um, depending upon the particular circumstance and the necessities, we're quite capable of switching back and forth between different ways of representing the unit cell. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.